You're listening to Something Cheeky, a collection of podcasts where two sisters discuss TV, books, and movies with just enough reverence and far too many pop culture references. Welcome to Something Cheeky, where we discuss the TV series Vikings. I'm Nikki. I'm Rosanna. I've watched the whole series, but Rosanna is completely new to it, has only watched up to what we're covering today, which is season two, episode four, Eye for an Eye. In this episode, it's Freaky Friday when the Christians and Vikings switch places when it comes to compassion and viciousness. Rosanna, what was your reaction to this episode? It's pretty brutal. There were a couple parts of this episode that I didn't like at all. But on the whole, you might be surprised to hear that I actually liked this episode. (laughs) Oh, finally. Oh my god, I've been waiting for this. I really felt like we made some progress. Oh, good. I liked that I got to see characters that I really like, and there just seemed like there was enough action for me this time. There were a couple of parts that I really, really didn't like, um... And actually, the couple of parts I didn't like both had to do with Apple Stand. So mm, <laughs> there's that. Which is unusual. Yes. Because we love Apple Stand. We usually do love Apple Stand. Yeah. I had some issues oh. with him this time. <laughs> okay. I'm excited <laughs> to hear them. <laughs> now, I know we're going to skip your favorite quote for now because I think you're going to roll that into your top three. Yes. I'm mixing right. things up a little bit this time. Yeah. So listeners, you'll have to be patient. <laughs> Let's get into the action. Um, I split it up mostly by groups because this show, the past several episodes, has just been jumping around all over the place. And so to make it a little less confusing, I'm going to stick mostly to um, each place that we're in for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with the escapees from Kattegat, Rolo and company and everybody. We start out with Aslog on the road complaining, I'm not staying here, it looks disgusting. And really living up to the whole princess title. Definitely. It's nice that Siggy's always there to help important people make it through, but never really manages to be important herself. I feel like she's kind of the hand of Vikings. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Aslog thinks that the kids aren't safe, uh, not just because, you know, of the general danger they're in from the Borg, but also she thinks they're going to die of diseases from being dirty. Not sure exactly what is going to cause these diseases. So here's the thing, too. I have kids. If my kids are going to be dirty and not murdered, (laughs) I would prefer that. Yeah. Because where does she think she's going to go where he's not going to get to them? Yeah. She's not very bright right now. (laughs) And is she planning on raising strong Viking men? Because they're going to need to be able to get dirty. Yeah. And get messy and fight and all that. Mm -hmm. She does not want to raise delicate Vikings. Correct. That aren't going to be real Vikings. Especially Ragnar Lothbrok's sons. Yes. Of all people. They're not going to be, you know, sitting inside the house, staying where it's quiet and safe. They're going to be out all over the place. And I just can't believe after such a short amount of time, she's already complaining about this. Like I, you, I can believe that. You just fled for your lives. Yeah. Like, you give it a minute. <laughs> I I can believe that she's complaining because she is... I, I want to keep saying, such a princess. And then I'm like, she's a freaking princess. So I guess it makes sense. But still. She's very entitled. And yes. um, thinks very highly of herself. She does. She's yeah. too good for all of this. Mm-hmm. I actually really enjoyed as people got progressively dirtier. Rolo's hair was so greasy. Siggy was just super dirty. I really liked watching Aslog get dirtier. Yeah. As her time face. Went on. Yeah. Her face got really dirty. It's like, it's about time. This is how people live. We uh, see Rolo come back and he's recruited 20 or 30 guys or warriors, maybe women. We know. Um, right. To kind of poke at Jarlborg a little bit, mess up his supply chains, and kind of remind him that Ragnar was not the person, not alone, in wanting to be against him. It makes Siggy really happy that Rolo was finally doing his duty, I guess. Uh, sober? Maybe she was just happy he was sober for once? (laughs) Maybe so. And just taking some action, any action at all? Finally starting to gain back um, respect and live up to his potential more than he has been for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And she is all over him. Yeah. Just here. I'm just waiting for like, let's get it on to play in the background. <laughs> she does that. Oh, thank goodness. That's not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel so bad for actors when they have to do body things. Like she just grabbed his junk. Yeah. And I'm like, she actually had to do that. And I, I also feel like that was not really necessary. 
or sexy at all. No, not at all. No. And actually, I I think I was actually surprised to see that because often I'm surprised that I don't see more sex or bad language. But then I remember that this show is not from HBO. It's from the History Channel. Yeah. So they've got, you know, stricter rules. And so for her to do a crotch grab? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That was... That was a little risque, for sure. I could use some more sex scenes. I would have really enjoyed a Rolo Siggy sex scene at this point. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get anything like that. Yeah, I think we've hardly, we've seen them kiss once, Mm -hmm. and everything else is just kind of them fighting most of the time. Yeah, they're not very affectionate. No, no, not like Ragnar and Lagertha were. Right. It's quite different. Yeah, it, yeah, they're different. At this point, uh, we go we go away and come back to everybody at the homestead, and we see everyone just standing around watching an animal being butchered. Not quite sure. Is this what you do when you don't have TV? They're Maybe. really, really starved for entertainment. <laughs> Maybe they're really just starved. Maybe they're just really hungry and waiting for the food to come out. That could be, too. I mean, where is this place that they're staying? Does it belong to somebody that we haven't seen? You know, we haven't seen them talk to anyone. Is it just like an outpost? Yeah, I don't know. Because Lagertha knew where it was, unless she got information from someone. I wondered how she found it. Well, Helga knew where it was. Yeah. So I wonder if she went to Helga? Maybe. Oh, you know, they said that they sent a farm boy to Helga. Right. Which, of course, I'm imagining Wesley from... (laughs) Princess <laughs> Pride is farm boy appearing on Helga's doorstep. <laughs> Miss, please excuse me. So maybe they did the same thing. Well, they wouldn't to have s- they wouldn't have sent anyone to Lagertha, but Helga might have. Why wouldn't they have? Why would they? Do you think Rolo's going to ask Lagertha for help? I don't know. No, That's I don't. That's a really think good question. So. I don't think so. I think hmm. if anything, when Lagertha heard about it, maybe she sent someone to Helga. Uh, maybe wondering if she had information. I really hope that they're just, like, scenes that we don't see of Lagertha and Helga hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just meeting, like, every couple of months or something just to have some mead or whatever. hmm <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> it's been a while since we've had uh, good bechdel test conversations mm-hmm. in the past. Those are so rare. I think it's just because we have so few female characters in this show. Well, I think some of the conversations that Siggy and Aslog have had... Yeah. Would. Mostly it's Siggy telling her quit complaining, <laughs> but that counts. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so Aslog sees the boys watching and wants them to stop, but they don't want to when she gets really upset about it. And I'm not sure if she's just upset because they're going against her or just the whole situation is really building on her and making it really tough. Mm-hmm. And everything is just becoming too much. It's like the, what's the meme? The bitch eating crackers meme? Oh. Have you seen that? Yes, so listeners. If you, I have. If you don't know what this is. It's that thing where <laughs> now, when I just said it's that thing, where all I can think of is Stefan from SNL. <laughs> <But> oh, <laughs> it's that thing when. <laughs> Anyhow, the bitch and crackers thing is there's someone that drives you crazy. You just cannot stand them, and so even normal things that they do make you angry. So it's like that bitch over there eating crackers. God damn it. <laughs> She's so annoying. Like, she's just eating crackers. Leave her alone. (laughs) That's that thing. Yes. So maybe that's what this is for Aslog. It's just, uh, it's all too much. Well, and and I don't want to give her a lot of credit because she's acting so princessy. However, she is still in her postpartum. That's true. You know, she just gave birth to her third baby in four years. She's probably exhausted. And she's got all kinds of hormonal things happening. She doesn't know where her husband is. She doesn't know how long she's going to be here. I mean, you know, I don't, I, it's, I don't feel sorry for her, but I can understand. I can sympathize yeah. that this is probably difficult for her. And so she probably overreacts just because she's already got stuff going on. And even taking that away, she is used to a certain way of living. And even if everyone else isn't, is, is like, get over yourself. Mm-hmm. It does take adjustment to get to that. She's not being very gracious about it, but... That's exactly it. She's not being gracious about it. And then she has a vision of Ragnar coming. I did appreciate that it was Ragnar exactly as he looked when he actually did appear. Mm -hmm. Same clothes, axe in his hand. Yeah. Running up the path. I bet that they filmed that all at the same time. 
Yeah. They just had him run up the path and they had him actually run up the path. Right. <laughs> where she could, he met her up there. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all we see of everyone there until the end when they actually show up. But we'll get back to that. Let's talk about Kattegat. Apparently people st are still alive. I was surprised. I was also I surprised. everyone was dead. Yep. Borg is making this big speech about how he wants the town to flourish. It's an important trading spot. The seer is not having it. <laughs> He's... <laughs> Yeah, just in the background, giving bitch face. Mm -hmm. He's not not happy about it at all. And the Borg is gonna he will pay someone's weight in gold for the location of Aslog and Rollo and and all the kids. I was thinking if I actually wanted to give information to him and I knew about it, I would send like the heaviest person in my family <laughs> to go tell him where they were. <laughs> not that I'm a snitch. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> I'm not interested. But just in case I were, where's Fat Uncle Joey? Send him. <laughs> <laughs> the Borg goes to see the seer, looks pretty nervous, and the seer, the seer says, don't ask too many questions, I have no time to answer too many. Does he really not have time? What the hell else does he do? He's got a full schedule, Nikki. Yeah. He's got a pedicure in <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> my makeup artist is coming to fill in my lips at four. <laughs> Gotta get done. I also thought it was so interesting that the Vikings can be so disrespectful to basically anybody but they are reverent to this seer mm -hmm. i mean what he says goes they don't mess with him um, they don't even really question him no they're very trusting of what he yeah. says yeah so we got a prophecy i'd say about jarl borg the seer says i see that an eagle hovers over you but i see that you yourself are the eagle an eagle is your destiny what do you think that means <laughs> sounds like a bunch of gibberish to me <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see an eagle, but you also are the eagle. There's an eagle around you, and also I'm holding an eagle skull. What was that? <gasps> I don't, I don't know how there's an eagle above him, and he also is the eagle. Like, is he dead and he's floating above his own body, like an out of body experience? <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> The seer has a seance. <laughs> I So I kind of hope that the seer is just messing with them. <laughs> <laughs> Borg seems pretty happy about it, saying that it's always a good sign in, in the stories. Yes, he did say that. But I also think that the seer, even if he feels tasked with giving the information that the gods give him and... Is he, mm -hmm. And he's allowed to tell. I think he's gotten pretty good at telling it in a way that he gets the reaction he wants, whether it's a true reaction mm -hmm. or not. Because So he leads people to a certain interpretation, even if that's not exactly. what he knows it is. Yes, exactly. I mean, okay. he might say, you know, I see an eagle around you, knowing that, that Borg is going to take that as a good omen, when actually maybe he's leaving something out would maybe lead him in another direction. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about it much, but I I wonder how much influence the seer has on, I, I guess, all the, the plot lines, really. Hmm. People go to him for significant moments, decisions. You know, they don't ask him to make a decision, but they kind of ask for the outcome right. in general. And it, it may or may not lead them to certain actions. So I wonder if you took the seer out of the equation, how much would change in, in these stories? Hmm. You know, Ragnar seems to have done so much because the gods promised him a son mm -hmm. or many sons. Right. And if the seer had never told him that, would he have, would he have basically abandoned Lagartha for Aslog? Would he have gone looking for that? You know, because that had a massive amount of change that caused so much change. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Something to think about. I think that the characters would have made different choices if they hadn't been given some direction when they asked for it. Ah, uh, yeah. Be a very different choose-your-own-adventure kind of book. <gasps> those books are the greatest. <laughs> I loved those books so much. They were great. I wonder if they still make them, I like new ones. I, I don't believe that they do. I tried to get the kids That's to read them. Got them from the library a couple of years ago, and yeah, they weren't really into them. Oh, but they're awesome. I know. I I guess kids are just harder to entertain nowadays with all their gosh darn technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so what's your gut feeling on if this prophecy bodes good or ill for the Borg? Well, so 
so what I said in the beginning when we first saw the seer was that I have a tendency to believe these types of characters because I feel like that's right. they're being used to give us information we couldn't have gotten any other way. Right. So I believe that what we're being told is that Jarl Borg thinks that he has a great destiny. I don't necessarily believe that that is true, though. Okay. I think it's a bad idea to piss off Ragnar Lothbrok. <laughs> and I think that once... That's a pretty good rule of thumb. Yes, and I think that once you're in his crosshairs, or whatever the term is for an axe... Um, <laughs> <laughs> crosshairs. <laughs> uh, you, you're kind of a, like a dead man walking. Because yeah. I definitely think that Ragnar is going to take this as a one of us is going to die because uh-huh. I will not let this go. You know, just like he did with the old Earl. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one or the other. He <laughs> Neither can live while the other survives, Nikki. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just, I don't think that they're both going to be able to survive. And I don't think Ragnar is going to die. So. Yeah, Ra- Ragnar is pretty... Um pretty brutal on his enemies people that cross him well and it's not even just that they're picking on him they're going after his family right you can say whatever you want about him abandoning lagertha but he wanted bjorn to stay with him and he cares very very deeply for those other boys and they've been threatened and he won't let that go i think that it was a really bad decision of jarl borg to go after ragnar like this. How did he not know? What did he think he was just going to sit down in his chair and Ragnar's going to be all right with it? Like, <laughs> oh, you got me, buddy. You just go ahead and take Kattegat. No. Maybe the prophecy about him being, about Jarl Borg being the eagle and an eagle also being above him. Is that what it was? Um, an eagle hovers over you, but I see that you yourself are, an, or are the eagle. Maybe it has something to do with his dead body being like birds flying around it. <laughs> You know, like vultures. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that's right either. It made more sense before I said it. <laughs> you know, I didn't look up anything about eagles in Norse mythology, mm. which if I did, I probably couldn't have told you because it may have spoiler been spoilerific. Yeah, yeah. that's probably true. Well, I'm glad I didn't look it up. I, I kind of wanted to look up the information about the actor that plays Jarl Borg because he is so familiar to me. Do you know oh. why? I don't know who he is. It's it's not even just the way he looks. It's it's the way he talks. It's like the tone of voice and the sound of his voice. It's very familiar. His name is the Thorbjorn Har. That doesn't help. Has he been in anything else? <laughs> I don't know if he sounds familiar because I've seen him in something else or if he just sounds like someone else. There's just some there's just mm. a way about his voice, you mean? His voice and then also how he talks. I just, he just reminds me of someone. And through this whole episode, every time he talked, I was like, who, who am I thinking of? Who am I thinking of? And I never could put my finger on it. You know, I know what you mean about him feeling like someone else that I've seen. He's mostly, he's mostly done Norwegian films. He's actually Norwegian. So you can probably tell by his name. I don't think that (laughs) it's the actor. I think it's somebody, I think he just reminds me of somebody else, but I sure couldn't figure it out. I'm seeing it too, and I'm trying to figure out. Maybe if I just uh, watch his scenes over and over again, it'll it'll hit me. <laughs> it's his something about his eyes. He just is reminds just me familiar, of someone yeah. else. Hmm. Yeah, I really like his performance. I think he's so good on the show. I do too. I I I think he does a good job as the character that he has. So let's move on from Kattegat to Sigvard's Hall. Bjorn gets the news about Kattegat, wants Lagertha to go ask Sigvard to send people to help restore Ragnar's lands, which means he doesn't seem to understand regular human relationships. Why would some man want to help his wife's ex-husband get his lands back? That's kind of reasonable. (laughs) It seems like an odd request, especially since he's not known to be selfless. He's a terrible person. I hate him so much. He really is terrible. He's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Add him to the rapist category. Lagertha tries to use her feminine wiles to convince him and also actually makes a really good point that the Borg will probably come for his lands next. So he should stop him now. So her husband tells her, even now you're still a handsome woman. Even now she is beautiful. And it's only been four years. It's not like she's 60. 
But she's, you know, people didn't live as long. She is beautiful. She and is he beautiful. is lucky that she ever even looked at him, let alone marry him. And I was really worried when he started attacking her that she was just going to let it happen. Yeah. And I just no. got cheered out loud when she, <laughs> did she punch him or kick him? She just hit him right in the crotch. Yeah. And I was like, you go girl. That's a Lagertha we love. I love that she did that. I was so happy. And then when we saw her again and she had her hair all in the shield made in braids, I was like, girl, that's my girl. I was so happy to see mm-hmm. her. I wonder if that was the first time that she got kind of armored up and, and battle ready since she left Ragnar, which makes me happy. I feel like that's her, her not her best look, but that's her most powerful. I think that's how she feels best. She, I mean, yeah. she probably has the most confidence when she's doing something that she's good at. And, and yeah. being a subservient wife is not her place. <laughs> she's just... It's not in no, her nature. No, she's just so... She's naughty by nature. <laughs> she's just so amazing. I just... It made me so sad when I was seeing her be abused and treated so poorly because I, I expected more from her. I expected her to stand up for herself. And when she did, I was so happy. It was such a fall from mm-hmm. the position she had held the esteem that she had garnered from everyone around her which seems kind of like a natural progression based on you know she had been in such a strong position in her you know her family and her marriage and then she became the earl's wife and she just you know continued to hold that high position she was the famous shield maiden and then it started all going downhill once ragnar wanted more sons and looked outside the marriage for that and then it just seemed to continue to go downhill for her and it she's finally I hate to use the, this phrase, but she's taking her power back, basically. Well, she is. She's, she's, um, not just that, she's, uh, it's almost like she's ready to be herself again, to reclaim uh, her, um, not personality, but, you know, her own, I don't know, just like... The person that she had, she, she had kind of yeah, forgotten she's about. she's done being the person that her new husband wants her to be, and she's reclaimed herself. And I like it a lot. Yeah. So after this partial rape and she gets the upper hand, we see Buren outside the door, like trying to decide if he should go in or not. And he hears her fighting back, which is great. I can't imagine if he'd gone in, that would have not have ended well. Well, she would have been a widow. So, but she, that's true. and he probably would have been killed for it. Maybe. Uh, she opens the door. I'm not quite sure why she opened the door at that point. Maybe just to get out of so. there. Yeah. And she sees Buren and the knife in his hand. He's like ready to go. Uh, she convinces him to to go to bed. But she says, but thank you. And I loved that moment. Yeah. That was that was really nice. So what do you think is next for this incredibly shitty relationship between Lagertha and Sigvard? Sigvard. I think that he's probably pretty mad at her <laughs> um, for fighting back <laughs> because he even said that he considers her body his property. So I think yeah. he's mad that she stood up to him and punched him in the crotch. And uh, I also don't know how many of those warriors with her uh, got his permission. I think maybe ah. she took people. Um, so he's probably going to be <laughs> mad about that too. But I don't know what's going to happen to him. I wouldn't mind if he just like fell off one of those really cool cliffs. That'd be okay. <laughs> or, or I don't know. <laughs> That'd be okay with me. <laughs> he's he's such a jerk. I mean, he's just he is in, terrible. If you're not even counting the last episode where we saw him hit her across the face, if you just take their conversation in their bedroom, you're yeah. you're still handsome, even though you're apparently ancient. Um, your body used to belong to Ragnar, but now it belongs to me. Which, by the way, I'm gonna do whatever I want with. I mean, that was like in a two minute conversation. He just proved how terrible he is. Yeah. So. This dude has not heard of bodily autonomy. He, and he's kind of old. And I wonder if he was married to somebody before her. Yeah. We haven't seen any no. other kids. But doesn't he seem like he's at an age where this would not have been his first marriage? I mean, I'm not saying he he's old, like old. I'm just saying for that time and for the age, I'm guessing he's yeah. late forties, maybe. Yeah. yeah okay. So fifties, maybe. This, he would not have just gotten yeah. married in the last four years. So I wonder no. if he had a wife and, I don't know, he killed her or she just killed herself because she don't want to be married to him anymore. I don't know. 
Mm. Or maybe she couldn't have any kids and he wanted kids. Or maybe she died having one. Maybe they both died. And I mean, it yeah. could have been a lot of things, especially during that time of um, yeah. health and, and all the advances in science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I um, I mean, he's terrible either way, whatever his sister is. I hate him. <laughs> yeah. It, they don't even give him anything nope. redeeming. Like, Rolo has so many problems, but he has a couple redeeming qualities. But this guy's no, got nothing. he's just an all-around jerk. We've only seen him in basically his worst moments. I hope those are his worst moments. Well, and when you say worst moments, you think of someone that's put in a position where they're having to react or whatever. This is just him on the regular daily basis. He just it's acts true. like this. He seems to seek yeah, it out. he's just a jerk. I think I might have mentioned that yeah. a couple times, that he's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to Wessex. So we're in Eckbert's town. I'm not quite sure what to call it. I always want to say castle, but it is not a castle. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it. It is kind of nicely built, though. They've got stone walls and... Compound? It looks pretty Would well you call fortified. it this compound? <laughs> <laughs> it's where they keep the raptors. <laughs> Compounds. Uh, all the his dinner companions are telling him delaying isn't good, but Eckbert wants to hear what they have to say. Uh, he in this scene he seemed very Ragnar like in his responses. There's going to be an exchange of hostages. Aethelwolf, his son, he, he's so, God, he's so sneaky. He's like, yeah, it'll be Aethelwolf, my son, who was shocked. And then he somehow convinces Aethelwolf that Aethelwolf's mm-hmm. totally okay with this. And he's, and he wants to do this. It's something he wants to do. Very manipulative. Yeah, yeah. And then when Aethelwolf says, oh, you know, okay, of course, anything you want, the look on Eckbert's face is just inscrutable, the way that Ragnar has these looks. Like not just not just a you know he doesn't get the gloating I pulled this off thing he's just you just no like you can see the gears turning in his head he's got so much planned I feel like he's twenty steps ahead of everybody else which makes him dangerous Ragnar is I guess gonna be the hostage even though he's the one making the negotiations but it makes sense I thought that was a really weird choice Ragnar as he walks through was really interested in the uh, in the who made the statues but the Saxons don't know and they said that it was. Um, like, there were giants on the island before they lived there. It reminds me of the Eldrin from Lies of Laclamora, who we've called giants, too. Yeah, yeah. I thought that that was such... It, that line caught me, and so I'm like, I have to look this up and see if there's something about mm-hmm. giants in England. What the heck? There is oh. an awesome story. Holy crap. It is so cool. So, uh, Great Britain is also called Albion. It's um, it's old, like, Greek name, um, which, if you... Have you ever watched Merlin? No. I know, I know the show. I think I've seen one episode. It's got, I really like that show. It, it's pretty cheesy. It, it's really, really low special effects budget, but it's got, like, John Hurt does the voice of the dragon. Oh, I didn't know there was a dragon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got Colin Morgan, who plays Merlin, who's on the fall, and he was just in Testament of Youth, and he's, like, starting to actually get real parts after this. Mm-hmm. And also, um, I can't remember his name, but the guy who plays Arthur is uh, Damien in the Omen TV show. I didn't know oh, there was an Which Omen I think is just TV called Damien. Show. Yeah, it's it's him when he's grown up. Huh, he's, interesting. He's forgotten everything that happened when he was a kid. You know, it's all repressed. And then things start coming back after he's experienced some war zones that as a photographer. It's really interesting. Terrifying. Yeah, it's pretty disturbing. <laughs> anyway, that show's really fun. But they always called it Albion. And with the whole Merlin thing, that, that's what it made me think mm-hmm. of. So here's the story of the giants in Great Britain. Apparently around... I don't know, uh, 1000 BC-ish, there is a king in Greece that married off his 30 daughters to different royal people, different royalty. Wow. And they all planned, they all planned to kill their husbands so they wouldn't have to be subservient to them. Wow. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, one of them uh, got wind of the plot and told the father and he put them all in this rudderless boat and set them <gasps> adrift. They landed in England. Yeah. Yeah. From Greece. They landed in England and Albina, the oldest... Or Albina, maybe? There's actually a road here in Portland named Albina. And I'm not sure if it's Albina or Albina <laughs> still. But she was the oldest and the first to shore. And she named the island after ah, herself, which I yeah. love. You and go, girl. That. And so, <laughs> so all these daughters gathered food and eventually learned to hunt, which aroused their lecherous desires. Okay. But since there were no pe- Yeah, yeah. Since there were no people on the island, they coupled with the demons, the incubi in this case, and begat a race of giants. 
So huh. the only people left on this island, I guess once all the women died, were these giants. And about 250-ish years later, Rudis from Troy came to Albion. There were 24 giants left because apparently the rest had been killed because of mm-hmm. inner strife. I don't know how there were so many in the first place unless, I mean, that many years later, unless they're immortal... I'm not sure how, is there some weird like incest thing with the daughters that are left? Because really all you've got are daughters and giants. Yeah. So but there are weird. demons too. Yes. But I don't think the women lived 260 years to create more giants. But could the half woman, half demon giant have a giant baby <laughs> with another giant? It sounded like they were all male. Oh. All the giants. It sounded like all the giants were male. Well, so but that's maybe a good the, question. all the giants were not immortal, but could live for hundreds of years. And then as those years went by, they killed each other yeah. in fighting. So Brutus arrives with his men and kills off all the giants, including Gog Magog, <laughs> who was thrown off a cliff during a wrestling match, which sounds super yeah. Grecian. And that's why there are no more giants in England. Isn't that a great story? That's a banana story. I've never heard anything <laughs> like it. Uh, it's it's uh, written in, it's mentioned in several different centuries in different poems and they all kind of have some of the very similar elements to them but none of them are quite identical what was the name of the goddess of war is it artemis uh yeah or uh, well they, they all have two names the greek and the roman she was the archer right yeah. So that's what these women reminded me of because they got to the island and they didn't have any men because they didn't want any men and they <laughs> yeah. hunted for their food and they were like Amazons. I'm just like <laughs> super like into Amazons right now with Wonder Woman coming out this week. And Oh, that's right. Yeah. She's an Amazon. We don't need no men. I heard that would make a great Amazon. <gasps> the best. Can you imagine her and Robin Wright Penn together mm-hmm. as the Amazons? Death by Snoo Snoo. <laughs> because they sort of look alike. <laughs> kind of. They're both blonde. You don't think their facials kind of look the same i don't know just me okay. maybe put them side by side and see so that was an aside that i thought that story was worth sharing definitely i thought it was amazing that is amazing oh you should post it was the link really to fun. it yeah. i will yeah yeah and to gog magog which is a name i thought was hilarious gog magog. yeah i think he was like the main giant maybe that's all they could say <laughs> you know like gwarp gwarp yes What's his name <laughs> Gwarp. Gwarp. Something like that. It's like if you put marbles in your mouth and then <laughs> yeah. try to say it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, thought that, I just thought that was such a neat kind of... There's so many little throwaway things like mm. that in in these sorts of shows yeah. that I'm like, I, have to, I wonder if that means something. And it totally means something. And you know, somebody who works for this show is researching this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. That must be a cool job. Yeah, I think so too. That's a job for a Ravenclaw. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that job. Mm. Uh, Vikings, if you're listening, you should hire me to do some research because I know how to go to Wikipedia. Yes. <laughs> That's, That's a uh, rare talent. I, <laughs> I actually have an English degree, so I've done a lot of literary research. I think you're totally qualified for this job. I should probably be a history major instead to do that, but you never know. Just write it down that you are and see if they check. <laughs> Sometimes they'll just take your word for it. We'll okay. see. <laughs> so I thought that Ragnar, besides asking about the sculptures, was acting really weird. Almost like he was high or drunk. He was just walking with a sort of like weird spring in his step and almost childlike. Like he was just so excited to see the king Eckbert's house and thanks for inviting me over for a play date and can i take a bath with you and it was just it was just really goofy yeah i always wonder how much of that is for show to try to make him seem more confident in the moment or less intimidating Maybe. i can't imagine he well less intimidating. i mean Eckbert sent all his men away and if he'd come you know come into the room looking super scary like he was gonna attack at any moment he wouldn't necessarily be able to get the kind of information he wanted and you know, actually making him look less intimidating could be really helpful for making deals. You know, make people underestimate you until it's too late. Yeah. And you've gotten the upper hand before they realize it. And he is a master negotiator. I wonder about him often if if when he acts when he acts um sort of silly or or like he's joking, how much of that is intentional and how much of that is personality? There was another point, I can't remember ex- exactly what was happening when it did, but he was talking with someone and smiling, kind of joking, and as soon as he turned around, the smile dropped off his face, mm. which was a surprise. It was kind of mm. jarring that that happened yeah. because it mm. seemed genuine at the moment. Right. Was it when he was talking to Aslog with the kids? And no, then it was uh, somebody in Wessex. But even that, he turned on a dime with the being angry about everything. Yeah. I think he has a lot of control over how he comes across. Which, you know, as... 
I can imagine that if you're somebody who's in a relationship with him, whether it's romantic or familial, that that can be really frustrating to never really know if the yeah. emotion that he's conveying is is true. It seems like we didn't get a ton of time with him before he was Earl, mm -hmm. but he seemed more genuine before that. He definitely. So did. it seems like yeah, it seems like over these four years that have passed, and you know, even all the time after he became Earl, uh, before we had the time jump, he's become much more of a politician. And I think he's also closed himself off a lot more. I think he used to be yeah, more open probably. to those emotions, and I don't think that he's really willing to let himself have them. Because they yeah. interfere or they make him weak. Life isn't as simple as it used to be for him. So Eckbert receives Ragnar and he's in the fucking bath oh again. God, that guy loves his bathtub. He's the cleanest man in England. He must be. Though it seems like a bit of a display of dominance to be basically naked and weaponless in front of your enemy. Like, I'm not even afraid of you. Look at this. Though when they did this, the pan back, I'm not sure if it was on purpose or not, but you could see, not that I was but you could see that he was wearing some sort of wrap uh, around like underwear mm -hmm. and i don't know if he was supposed to be naked or if we were supposed to see that or not but i could clearly see it well i don't know about Eckbert, but i think we were definitely supposed to believe that ragnar was yeah. naked so well, yeah because he started dropping his pants and they panned away just before we saw some man butt yeah which i'll tell you what if that was hbo there would have been that sea would have continued Heck, they do that on regular TV. And That's you know. true, uh, too. So Ragnar strips down. He's got serious scars back and front. Serious abs, too. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see men with hair on their chests on TV. Yeah. The trend is changing so much. Because, you know, five years ago, every man was hairless. Right. From from the bottom of their five o'clock shadow <laughs> down. <Yeah. laughs> they had to have that part. But, yeah, no chest hair. Yeah. I Yeah. I mean, they have to do it for, you know, historical, you know, sig or, yeah, accuracy as well, which always drives me crazy because women never have hairy armpits or legs mm -hmm. in every historically accurate otherwise show. Yeah. Like, they would never show Catherine Winnick with, you know, pit hair. No. Also, I, as as a woman myself, I wouldn't want to grow it out. They'd have to put fake hair there because I don't like having because it's irritating, <laughs> not because of, you know... Yeah. society's opinion of it <laughs> well and they do that for for stuff when they actually need it they use um well they use for um pubic hair they use merkins which are okay. like a patch of hair that you kind of glue on or that's spirit gum on or something sounds yeah. really uncomfortable it does but they probably have similar <laughs> things for armpit hair when they need yeah. it but yeah though i love uh selma hayek when she played Oh my God, what was the name of Painter? It started with an F. Frida? Yes, something? when she played Frida Kahlo in the movie. Uh, Frida Kahlo ha is um, one thing that's in all of her pictures is that she has a unibrow. Right. And Selma Hayek said they didn't have to fake it. She just stopped plucking right. <laughs> and got a unibrow. So that's nice. You know, she really let that happen. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what she said in the view. Anyhow, Eckert wants to know why they're still there after getting all the treasure and... Ragnar explains that he wants to know how they farm. Basically, he wants, la wants land. And Eckbert is an ambitious man, which we kind of know because we know, you know he's gained a lot of territory already. But we don't know what else he wants. What else do you think he wants to achieve? They give us two teases where he says, there's something I want. And then apparently maybe Ragnar hears it, but we've already left that scene. And then later Ragnar is talking to Horik and says he wants something. And then he gets the news, the ship comes up. And so twice we get teased with what does he want? And we still don't know. What do you think it is? Is it not just that he wants to be the ruler of all the land he can get his hands on? Maybe. He just wants to be everybody's king. We get to the camp in Wessex, the Viking camp. And Horik wants to know if they can trust Eckbert. And again, we still don't find out what the heck he wants. And then one of Horik's ships shows up, which I was kind of confused about because at first I thought um, it was one of the ships that got lost at sea and it just found them. And then, you know, we find out it's actually a message for Ragnar, which means they came from Kattegat or somewhere where they got news of Kattegat. But if they had been in Kattegat, they probably would have helped fight. So where did these people actually come from and why weren't they with the original group of ships? Which I don't think matters, but... I that didn't seem to quite line up. Maybe somebody from Kattegat was sent to King Horik's lands to tell them to go tell Ragnar. <laughs> there's um, there's really a lot of need for cell phones um, in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Or email. We still think they need email. Getting messages by boat seems mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really inefficient. 
So I'm not sure how this guy, and, and it's like, it takes so much time to get all this other stuff done. They don't even have time to tell us how anybody yeah. found out. <laughs> Maybe they just heard about it. Maybe. Because, you know, Lagertha heard about it. Nobody, as as far as I think, yeah. nobody showed up and told her. I want to know who all these people are traveling through towns, giving this information to different people. I, I feel like but I guess trade goods often have, to get have yeah, people going from one place to another and mm. gossiping. Yeah. So I can only imagine that that's how it got back there. It's nice that they also were able to tell him that his family fled and weren't killed outright. Yeah. So there's reason for him to believe they're still alive. But he's immediately going to go home. Though Horek is going to stay and wants to keep Athelstan as a translator. And I liked that Floki was very interested in this conversation. It was. It's like ping pong head back and forth mm. waiting to... See what happened. Ragnar said this Athelstan's choice. Apple's like, yeah, I'm happy to help. And Ragnar's like, I really didn't want it to be your choice. Why don't you stay here? <laughs> or go with me. <laughs> Even gives him the chance to you know, change his mind by morning when they leave, which obviously he does not do. I, I had a hard time with Athelstan being given this choice. I couldn't decide which I thought was the better option. I, uh. I really wanted him to go with Ragnar um, because he is close to their family and I think that he f felt some obligation to go. But I also thought that it would be a bad idea for him to leave and not have anyone there speak the language and sort of lose this ground that they've gained. I just thought it was weird that Ragnar didn't agree that it was a good idea for Athelstan to stay just to yeah. maintain their progress. I, I thought it was a really difficult decision. Yeah. Well, he may not have been thinking through all the ramifications in the moment as well. That's true. Because he had just found out about all and this. And of course, by the end of the show, I very much wished Athelstan had gone with yeah. Ragnar. Yes. But hindsight's uh -huh. 2020. After Ragnar leaves, the Vikings start being despicable again. The ripping nuns. I That was one of the parts of this show that I just could not mm, handle. Yeah. I hated it so much, especially with the closed captioning on. Oh my Way god, I read too much down. detail. Um, and I also really hated Apple Stan just sitting in the tent. I mean, I don't, I, I don't yeah. know that there's anything he could have done. I don't think he could have. They would have just killed him or or beat him up. Yeah. But to, I mean, f for him to be who he was, I, I just, it was really hard for me to see him like that because I like him and I want to continue to like him, and I did not like him at all in that scene. I just, I wish that he had had enough courage to go out and to do something about it. I also watched it with closed captioning on, which actually made me see things that I didn't hear in the first place. It had one, it said, nun screaming in terror as background noise. Then there was someone, some man that yelled milk her, which I didn't hear, but I right. saw that and I was like, there oh my God. There are several um, background sounds or conversations that I wouldn't have known what they said if I wasn't watching it with closed captioning. Yeah. And I definitely could have done without it from this And whoever is writing these closed captions is serious about their job. Because after that, it said st sadistic laughter. I'm like, not just, you know, men laughing, but. It was really, really an awful scene. Very, very bad. And the thing is, too, you didn't even see anything, and it was a horrible yeah. scene. I was really yeah, disappointed. It's, it's quite a choice the show has made to wait until Ragnar leaves to have this scene. Because it very easily could have been happening when Ragnar was there, but it's like they, they want us to like Ragnar, so they're not going to associate mm -hmm. this kind of behavior with him and his men. And I, I don't think that he would have stopped them if he had been there, so it's definitely trying to skew our perception of him you know there's been a decent amount of rape in this show and rape by some people that we didn't hate until that happened um, or that were kind of on ragnar's side you know from kattegat but ragnar has never been around for it so we haven't found out not only if he condones or doesn't condone it but if he participates like these other men do so they're kind of withholding this for me, I think a really big, um, big influencer of how I feel about Ragnar. Well, I think if they came right out and said that he had an opinion one way or the other, it would be concrete. You yeah. know, if they had a scene where he was involved in it and they want us to like him and not think he's like that, but they know realistically yeah. they can't say that because that's unrealistic. Yeah. So I think that's exactly it. I think that they're wanting to shape our opinion of him by not giving us that piece of information and making us guess or assume as a viewer 
I don't really think that's fair for them to do that. Yeah, I agree with to, that. To keep that piece of information from us. Yeah. Just right. just to try to make us lean one way or the other about him or about any character that we see. And we haven't seen Rolo do anything of the sort since the slave woman in what episode two that he raped before they went on the voyage. I, I wonder if they I wonder if they regret that at all. They should. It was terrible and unnecessary. Yeah. And not even just because of that, but because it seems like they're, from what we've seen, like, we're trying to get him on a redeeming path. Uh, definitely. But it's it's really hard to think he can ever be redeemed if he was once that kind of person. Yeah, it's not okay to be a really terrible person and, like, hit women. Um, but even that would have been, you know, if he had slapped a woman, let's say, would have been a more believable road to redemption. But yeah. this, I mean, you're just putting him so far into this category. Yeah. Yeah. A really casual rape where he was completely casual about the whole thing. If they really wanted to put him on this road and that had been the plan the whole time, they should have, or I think they would have, put in something to indicate that there was consent. Or that he regretted it or anything. You know what I mean? If they somehow had implied consent, at least there would have been a little bit of a chance for him to kind of wiggle out. I mean, he's he's still pretty scummy, but I think that was a bad, bad move on, on the show writer's part. And he's been around that sort of behavior since, in a way. We haven't seen anything of the sort from him since, and so that's why I, I wonder if they are like, I wish we hadn't have made that choice in the beginning, because he's been so far from the really, uh, just the brutal behavior toward women. Well, and, and I wonder if, you know, it was a new show, it was the second yeah. episode um, if they were like, well, it's a show about Vikings, of course that's what's going to happen before <laughs> he leaves. And I think that they treated it maybe too yeah. lightly, thinking that people would just accept it because mm -hmm. of the content of the show. And, I mean, they really, you just put a label right on your character from the get-go that is pretty hard to scrub off. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like he cheated on his taxes. He's a rapist. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no more rape talk. Yay. Let's talk about <laughs> crucifixion instead. <laughs> no, no, not quite yet. Um, but we do see Apple stand looking at a Bible, which has a picture of Jesus and it gets stigmata, which is nice foreshadowing, I guess. I suppose it was. Pretty gross. An odd moment. Also, he was really drunk. Weird. That he whole wasn't scene was like weird. on acid or something. I've been pretty drunk. I've never hallucinated stigmata. <laughs> well, but we don't know what was in his drink either. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Who knows what sort of herbs they sprinkle around it. I think I think that um Applestand's issue right now is that he is trying to deal with being two people. He's uh -huh. and and it's an inner struggle for him. So that's why he's drinking and that's why he's sort of second guessing himself. Um because I think that it's almost like a Stockholm syndrome kind of thing where he's become a viking because he lives with vikings, but there's still parts of him that are English. And a monk <laughs> or, or a, pri a priest. Um, and I think that he, even though he's acting like a Viking, I think he's still struggling with that inside. And I think that that um, is causing him to, to act odd, um, you know, to dream Erratically. or to hallucinate. Or, yeah, I, th I think he just, um, he hasn't settled on what yeah, he really and is. the fact that he, he, when he was being crucified, he still um, denied God according to what they said, what the what the bishop said that he had denied him. But he was praying mm -hmm. <laughs> with Christian prayers. He doesn't belong anywhere anymore. He doesn't fit yeah, in either world. Yeah, I think he's he's trying to be both and neither, or he's trying to be both, but he can't be either. He just doesn't fit. Yeah. It it seems like he's he's trying to be Viking, but his old ways are so ingrained, like the praying, you know, and the, the protecting of women and these nuns. He just can't, he can't give up those feelings that have been his feelings for his entire life until five years ago, basically. Well, and also, it's not like one day he decided, you know what, this Christian faith is just not my thing. I just, I don't believe it anymore. I want to go out and find something that I do believe in, that I want to have faith in. No, he was, he was not given a choice. So, of course, he's going to fight against it, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. And I feel sorry for him. Poor Athelstan. He, yeah, he doesn't belong anywhere. And then they nail him to a cross. This guy. 
I really thought they were going to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, he's in the hunting party. And he's the only one that survives. Which is a little weird. That he's the only one that survived. Yeah, and like, those arrows just started flying like crazy. I was waiting for Robin Hood to kind of pop out of the trees or something. <laughs> and then uh, he is, I mean, he just drops every. He drops his bow, he drops everything, and just bolts. Mm-hmm. And then he made it to safety, we thought, for a while. Right. And slept and, you know, was rested. And then, of course, woke up to arrows coming right next to his head. And he's completely surrounded. I thought that was weird. Why didn't they shoot him? Yeah, in the moment when he he saw yeah, he saw the soldiers in front of him and then you heard him kind of realize there's a noise behind him and turned around and there were even more just behind him. But yeah, I don't know why they didn't shoot him. They shot everybody else. Maybe they were just looking for someone to punish. Because apparently they turned him over to the bishop. I don't know why. I was just say, how did they even know that he would be an appropriate person to do this to? They didn't know his history, did they? Yeah, he, so he spoke their language and he, I, mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what he said. If it was, I'm from here or I am like you. And so maybe they thought he's Christian or he was Christian. And then the bishop immediately went to apostate, which is just the denying of, of your religion. Oh, maybe. Apostate. Yeah. But I, I'm not sure they gave, they gave him time to say, I was a monk and then I was right. captured by Vikings. And then I became a Viking, and now I'm back in England, and I'm not a monk, but... I am whichever religion the country I'm in is. This is a really weird progression. Whichever religion will keep me from being murdered right now, yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm at. When we went to Athelstan and saw him with the crown of thorns, I, I remember the first time I saw this episode, and I was just like, oh god, not again. I don't want this to happen, so much mm-hmm. blood... And they nailed him to the cross. And then they were about to stab him with the spear. They were like, we're really going to redo this whole crucifixion thing with Jesus. Which I don't really understand. Because you're treating him like he's Jesus. So you then are going to act like the betrayers of Jesus? I'm not quite sure how that fits in with your Christian religion. So the bishop said we do this in the name of Jesus Christ, right? I I think if Jesus saw you doing that, he'd be like, yeah, when that happened to me, it was pretty horrible. Um, you yeah. might you might have remembered the time where I said to treat each other well and forgive and, you know, that whole informational speech about caring about other people and not nailing them to crosses. Yeah, and didn't Jesus do that so people could get into heaven? Like, he endured that right. for a very specific purpose. It, I just think that their logic is... Completely really illogical. Wrong. It made no sense at all. It's the dumbest thing I've ever yeah. heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would mention the... The crucify him chant sounded like Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh my which gosh, I definitely didn't it? got. Yeah. Crucify him, crucify him. It was terrible. And then just in my head, Jesus Christ, <laughs> superstar. That's what was going through my head like the rest of the when night. We had to perform that when we were in when we were involved in church when we were kids. But yes. Well, we, we were teenagers. actually sing it. We had to lip sync to we lip sync to the, the CD. CD. In a yeah, it was a amazingly bad. Yeah. I uh, did a fabulous job in my role as Mary Magdalene. I was Judas. Where? I got Ooh, to be Judas. We're the worst. Awesome. <laughs> we are the worst. <laughs> we were cast appropriately, weren't we? I'm actually really surprised <laughs> that a Catholic church did a rendition of Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> what? They were trying to make it relevant to teenagers, except I had never heard of the musical when I was 14. Well, yeah, wasn't it done in the 70s? It's pretty old, I thought. I I did not know what it was until they made us learn the songs. And then we had to act it very overdramatically and lip sync to the music. I'm still not quite sure why they cast a girl as Judas, but, you know, whatever. You just had that traitor look about you. Mess with gender roles. Look at that shifty-eyed girl over there. Bring her in. (laughs) I don't remember who played Jesus, but now I kind of hope it was a girl. It was one of the twins. Remember the really tall... Tall. Um, I think they were Native American or Hispanic. Oh, and they I don't had that long black hair. Um, that would work. Yeah, they did it well. The which whichever twin it was did a good job. And and I'm not saying that they were the same person. Like we've talked about how twins don't have their own personalities. <laughs> I don't remember either one of their names. So, uh, listeners in our other show, Lies of Loch Lamora, we've had a couple sets of twins that seem to be not just identical in looks, but their personalities are complete. They're they're basically they're interchangeable. Person-formed. Yeah. Yeah, so totally interchangeable. These, these twins that went to our church were not interchangeable. I just didn't know them well enough to even... <laughs> I don't even remember their names, so... But the look was right. Yeah. 
Athelstan's about to get the spear in his side when Eckbert comes and saves him and says, cut him down. Why did he save him? So he pretty much just shows up and says, hey, dudes, don't kill him. And they're like, no, 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 we really want to crucify him. And he's like, I'm the king. I said no. And they're like, fine. (laughs) He gave no reason at all. Why do you think he wants this guy to not be killed? Because he doesn't know who he is. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want his people to think it's all right to start <laughs> crucifying people. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look the other way this time, guys. But no more crosses. <laughs> That's it. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, you know what? Maybe he was trying to undermine the bishop. I could see him doing that just so he continues to be, you know, the ultimate power, the the giver of yeses or nos. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Even. If it's a religious issue, it still goes to him. To remind people that the bishop is not the one in charge there. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. I always thought the whole monarchy thing was so interesting with all that. You know, being an American, it's it's hard to have that concept of it. But the the whole, uh, you know, a king appointed by God in in specific countries with with that kind of religious setup um, and then being the highest. But if they're Catholic, then the Pope is higher, I think. But, but if they're Protestant, they don't answer to the Pope. And so there was like the emperor of, I guess the emperor of Rome. I don't know. There was an emperor back in, way back, God, I am terrible at history. Holy crap. (laughs) No, no, no. Please continue. (laughs) This is very informative. (laughs) I think like the Holy (laughs) Roman Emperor. Someone please tell me. (laughs) But he was, he was in charge and he, you know, had more power than the king's. Yeah. And so the whole oh, hierarchy, I, I mean, it depends on, on the huh. exact um, the exact religion, but the Christian-based religions have the appointed by God king. So do you know what that reminds me of? What? In The Man in the Iron Mask. Of course. Leonardo DiCaprio. Somebody says something to him and he throws a fit about it and he says, I am the king ordained by God. Pretty much that's his way to say, I do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. Um, So I could just hear Leonardo (laughs) DiCaprio saying that. Which, I don't care what anybody says. I thought that was a really good movie. (laughs) I very much enjoyed it. I watch it when it comes on TV, on TNT or TBS or whatever channel plays old movies. (laughs) (laughs) It's, I think it's a good movie. I like it. Anyway, yes, Ordained by God. I wonder if Eckbert knew Athelstan was a a Northman-ish because he, you know, it seems like he was, well, why was he there in the first place? Did someone tell him this was going to happen? Did he just stumble upon it? It seems unlikely he would just stumble yeah, upon it. Yeah, that was really like weird. I don't know. What do you think he's going to do with Applestown now that he's saved him from crucifixion? I wonder if he'll try to get information about Ragnar from him. Maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he knows that he's useful or not. I mean, he doesn't really look like a Viking. Yeah. You know, he doesn't really look like the other people. But even <laughs> yeah. then... I, I'm not going to give Eckbert that much credit. I can tell from 700 yards away that you're not a Viking. You must be a guy that used to be a priest that isn't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that doesn't seem accurate. So, <laughs> I think he probably saved him because it would undermine the bishop. I think he's going to find him useful. Oh, right. Okay. Even if he doesn't quite know it yet. Or maybe he'll use him somehow as a hostage or a go-between for King Horik now that Ragnar's gone. I can't imagine, though, that Horik is going to want to have many negotiation talks if they just killed a whole bunch of their people. Yeah. Is is the son still with Horik? Is the prince? I believe so. So that was a really bad idea to kill all those people, I would think. Because we know that (laughs) the Vikings... Don't have any issue killing people related. Oh wait, to no, kings. you mean Athelwolf? So, I sorry, I thought you meant Horik's yeah. son. Uh, no, I think oh. he had met because Ragnar came back, so they would have oh, given Athelwolf back. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I I don't remember if I ever saw him at their camp at all. I don't think we did. Yeah, we just saw him leave. Right. Okay. But he probably didn't go far. Uh, I think yeah. you're gonna find what happens with Apple Stan pretty interesting. Mm. There's a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff. He's one of my favorite characters, and so I love every time we get to see him. So we see him laid out on the cross, and they're hammering nails into his hands. And this is what I'm thinking in my head. They saved him from the sacrifice just to kill him this way? What? Oh. I was like, I really thought they were killing him. I thought he was going to be dead. I thought we were losing Apple Stand. So 
I'm assuming they're keeping him around for something good. This is purely theoretical, but I wonder if if this all exists, if Athelstan has been accepted by the Norse gods, and if him, if he had been killed with this crucifixion, if that would have gotten him into Valhalla. Well, if he was crucified and died, then he would have been whatever their word for martyr is, right? I don't know. Because he died because of his belief. So it seems like they'd have to let him in. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the Norse religion has the concept of honor. As the old man said in the last episode to Rollo before he ran from Katgat, he said, you know, the gods are totally fine with you running to fight another day. And so uh, dying to uphold your religion doesn't seem like, well, for one thing, they haven't really encountered other religions from what we've seen. That's so true. It's kind of a new concept. Well, would they not consider this something of a battle death because and see i don't know because he's surrendered oh, that's i don't true. know i wonder if he'd just go to hell to the to the norse hell h-e-l yeah i don't know he'd probably just show up at purgatory and jesus christ and odin would be like flipping a coin <laughs> i get him no i him? get him no no listen now <laughs> the only fair thing yeah i don't know what a mess just imagining yeah. Apple Stan standing around in purgatory for 800 years with a bunch of other, with like Rolo because he's been baptized. Oh. So he can't really go to the gala, <laughs> but he has to wait. Oh, okay. Can't really this is what it is. Heaven. It's a whole row of people. And then there's Jesus Christ and Odin. Uh -huh. And it's like when they pick teams at PE, it's like, all right, you get Rolo. Okay, my turn. I'll take Apple Stand. Okay, and then it's like whoever's the last person picked is like, oh, this is so embarrassing. Neither God wanted me. In my head, Rollo and Apple stand, and any other Viking warriors are all wearing like long white robes with halos <laughs> and wings. <gasps> so, and Rollo's like, God damn it, like swinging his, throwing his hair behind his okay, head. Okay, but like if he said that, Jesus Christ would be like, oh no, oh, Odin, you take him. He just took my name in vain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listeners, if anyone can draw, please draw me. <laughs> Athelstan and Rollo in purgatory. In their angel outfits. With Jesus and Odin and their coin flipping. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Now I want a shirt that says purgatory kickball team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, so we get back to Norway and some of the ships, two ships, show up at Helga's front door. Luckily, Helga knows where Ragnar's family is. Ragnar wants to leave right away. All the Vikings coming off the ship look happy to be alive. They're, like, collapsing on mm -hmm. the sand. There was apparently a storm. They lost two of the ships. Thor was angry with them. And Floki, understandably, looks pretty upset about that because he is he so really devout. He does not want... Yeah, he does not want the gods to be unhappy with him. Of course not. They get to the hideaway and Ragnar gets to meet his son. Says the serpent in his eye is a blessing, not a curse. Which is nice. Tries to get in Aslog's pants, and she's like, no, no, we have to wait three days before we have sex. Why do they have to wait? I thought maybe she just had some sort of a, a premonition or something. Like, oh. if we have sex today, I'm going to get pregnant again, and I just can't even right now with you. If I wait three <laughs> days, I'm in the clear. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's just really good at tracking her cycle. I guess they'd have to learn things like the rhythm method with no yeah. contraception. Yeah, that too. Or just have a bazillion babies. I wonder how old she's supposed to be in this I have show. No idea. Because she seems, at least she feels like Ragnar's age, but she must be considered younger if she's still yeah. having all these kids. I mean, I wouldn't be, expect her to be 40, which we would expect from, you know, Lagertha. Yeah, Lagertha. I guess she's probably supposed to be mid to late 20s, but I think that that actress is older than that. Okay. Yeah. She's just so tall and striking it mm -hmm. gives her this kind of ethereal right. almost ageless look but the kind of ageless that makes you not look like a teenager there's a, a character in the dresden files books that um McAnally, that owns a pub <laughs> yeah and he's always described as a man who could be anywhere from 30 to 50 mm -hmm. you just can't you can't tell how old he is and that's what i think of with aslog ragnar turns right around and tells rollo he wants to attack the borg immediately <laughs> you had mentioned earlier that uh, mm -hmm. you were surprised that the History Channel got away with the crotch grab with Rollo. At this point, Ragnar calls the Borg uh, uh, Motorstroden. And I'm like, that's weird that everything's in English except for this one phrase. Why is that? I looked it up. It means motherfucker. <laughs> he called him a motherfucker and just didn't say it so they could get past the censors. That's he said amazing. it in Old Norse. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, that's funny. I thought that was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rolos. Rolo says they don't have enough men. And that when we find out that Borg uh, has the bounty on Ragnar, I mean, I guess we already knew that, but it seems more wanted postery at this point, the way mm-hmm. Rolo says it. And then we find out the Borg hears that Ragnar is back and he's vows to kill him. What a surprise. Also, it's such a performance. You know, he pronounces mm-hmm. this in front of a large group of people. I feel like he's much more showy than a lot of the other leaders we've seen. You know, a, a lot yes, of times definitely. when we hear these sorts of pronouncements, it's to a wife, you know, or to like two friends or something. Mm-hmm. But he makes all these decisions and presents them to groups of people. It's an interesting, mm-hmm. it, it's such a different form of leadership that we've seen. It's nice to have differing characters like this and not just cookie cutter yeah. kind of earls and yarls. And then we get to the farmstead and we see a group of warriors, which I thought was pretty obvious. It was Lagerther in front. Ragnar figures it out really quickly, too, that mm-hmm. it's not an enemy of Borg. It's uh, it's just Lagertha and everybody. And so in the history of the actual Lagertha that lived, that was married to Ragnar, she did come and save him during a civil war. He was about to lose and she showed up with 120 ships to wow. back him up. And because of her... Because she still cared for him. Uh, he ended up winning. So we don't know if that's going to happen or not. But the fact that she is backing him up like it was in history is nice. I appreciate that. I think it's a, a reasonable assumption that her bringing that many warriors is definitely going to help. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've got, you know, the few people they have there. But they've got the other 20 or 30 people. And I don't know how many people Jarl Borg has, but it didn't look like that many. He had, you know, a decent number of ships. But some of those guys died. Right. They didn't all survive the takeover of Kattegat anyway. And then we have the reunion between Ragnar and Bjorn, which made me really happy. Ragnar said, I do not need to ask you if you've been fed well. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's so tall and big. So next week, we're going to discuss season two, episode five called Answers in Blood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These titles are not very... Uh... Informative, I think we've yeah. decided. It's no Lies of Loch Lamora where it's very clear what's going to yes. happen or completely nonsensical. That's very true. Yeah. Um, I think we're probably going to have uh, a fight between Ragnar and Borg because I don't think Ragnar's willing to wait at all, especially now that Lagertha's shown up with reinforcements. Mm, yeah. It, it kind of makes me happy that Lagertha seems like she's headed back to Kattegat. Um, okay. I don't think she really has a place there, which is yeah. sad for me. But I think wherever Bjorn goes, she's going to want to follow to make sure he's okay, at least. Um, so, I mean, as long as she's around somewhere and I get to see her, I'm happy. I wonder if Aslog had any indication that Lagertha would be coming back into their lives. I don't know if that would have made a difference to her one way or the other about having sex with Ragnar or not. I just wonder if that had come up in any of her visions good question all right rosanna it's time for your top three category plus your quotes so my category this week is characters that have grown the most in the four-year interval and (laughs) most mvp (laughs) Uh, I decided to combine my top three with my quotes because the three characters that I'm going to talk about, I picked quotes from them that I felt like it illustrated why I thought they had grown. So, okay. uh, the first one is Siggy. I think that in the last four years, Siggy has really uh, um, turned into a hard worker. I think her perspective has shifted quite a bit, and I think she's really become a caregiver. And the quote that I chose for her, she's speaking to Aslog and she says, many of our people live like this. Life is not a walk across an open field. It's basically get over it. Kind of, yeah. And and Siggy has gotten over it. <laughs> she was sort of in that position before. Yeah. And she's, she's not only been able to move past her, you know, disappointment, but I think she's actually doing really well considering... At one point near the end of the episode, she's milking a goat when Ragnar shows up. In the rain. <laughs> which is, yeah. And nobody else is even outside. Yeah. I think I think that she's in an okay place for herself. And she probably feels a lot of self, self-worth self by by taking care of Aslog and the kids and Rolo. You know? 
Siggy always seems to be there to help important people make it through, but yeah, never she really, really manages to be important herself, which is interesting. And I'm not sure if she if she wants to be important or if she's totally fine being in the background. Yeah, and I think she she's she's seems good like at it. Um, the hand in A Song of Ice and Fire. She's basically yeah, she's running things behind the scenes, but not actually um, being out front like the person in charge. So the second person I picked is Rolo. Ah. Rolo has become much more humble and I think he knows himself a lot better and I think that he's really started to appreciate the relationships that he has in his life that are good for him instead of just taking advantage of them and he's talking about Ragnar to Siggy and says when I searched my heart I discovered that I always loved him that I'd grown to hate myself and I think that's a really it's a really telling line because I just think it it maybe shows some of where his head was you know that he got to the Mm. point where he even hated himself and that he's Mm -hmm. at a point now where maybe he can move on I mean also just that he has some sort of drive something to work towards something to fight for I think is gonna make a big difference in his life and Siggy's already seen it so we said in a previous episode that we thought he really needed therapy. He he still does. <laughs> no, he still does. He's one of those lifelong patients. <laughs> yeah. And then the third character I picked was Bjorn. Uh, obviously, he's grown quite a bit in the last four years, yeah. physically. <laughs> into a different actor. Um, <laughs> a really but, tall actor. <laughs> But, but the, as a character, he's grown up. He's a man now. He keeps Gita's memory, which I loved so much. And he wants to rely on himself and find his purpose. And I think that when you compare that to a child, you know, he's really grown up because he, he used to see how he was as a part of his family. Now he wants to see what is his place in the world. Mm-hmm. And when he sees Ragnar, he says... For a long time, Father, I feel I've carried nothing else but memories. He's really ready to move on and to start his own life and to keep to keep the memory of Gita and to also have the memories that he has of Ragnar, but to make new memories and to be able to, I guess, just move on. I feel like he got the best parts of his parents. You know, yeah, he got yeah, he got Lagertha's strength and her compassion, and he got Ragnar's you know not just physicality, but and I wouldn't even say ambition because we don't we haven't really seen much from him, um, but his purposefulness and his mm-hmm. um, not just hard headedness, but you know he makes a decision and he and he tries to go for it, and also yeah. what neither of them seem to have, but he seemed to get himself is the seriousness. Yes. He seems far more serious than his parents. He does. And I wonder if part of that is because what he went through um, when when they lost Gita, when they left his father, when he had to adjust to a new life. That can make you a little a little more subdued. He grew I up think. quickly. Yeah, he's not yeah. carefree. Well, like so much was, changed for, for him sure. so quickly too. He went from being yes. the son of farmers to the son of an earl and a famous shield maiden when it hadn't really mattered much before. Mm -hmm. The son of a then very famous man who had gone west. And then, you know, he had to have his parents split up and he had to go go endure his horrible stepfather. Oh, I know. And, you know, I think I think if you asked him, he wouldn't say that he regretted choosing Lagertha at the end. I agree. But I think he also really was sad to miss the time. Definitely. He would have had with Ragnar. Yeah, not regretful, yeah. but well, nostalgic you know, you make for one what choice, could have been. You're always deciding against the other. You can you can never get that back, you know. And I think that he was okay with the choice he made, but misses what he lost. Though know? this doesn't seem like the darkest timeline. <laughs> it's the, you know the the community episode where. <laughs> oh, I don't remember all the community episodes. <laughs> No, it's, they refer to it so much. Ovid does all the stuff and they see all the alternate timelines and you start seeing everything branching off. And there's the darkest timeline where everyone is evil. I've not seen that, but that sounds hilarious. But they make references to the darkest timeline often after that. (laughs) Kind of in a weird way because he should know about it because it was another timeline. Right. (laughs) So, but someone's like this month. Right. This feels like the darkest timeline. (laughs) That's great. That show is fantastic. <laughs> Everyone needs to watch Community. Funny. Yeah. That's one of the iconic episodes. That is a really good That one show. in the um, the paintball fight. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> the, I remember the giant that one. Pillow fort, blanket fort that they build. And they have territories oh, and they're basically Oh like yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. I, I need to go that. watch that show again. Yes. It's so funny. Yeah. That is a funny show. Do you have any predictions about what's gonna happen next? I know you said, you know, think Ragnar's definitely going for Borg. What about in England? I'm worried that Horrock's gonna screw stuff up. <laughs> I yes. <laughs> I think he needs Ragnar there to make any sort of uh to take any sort How of action. How did he become king? And I think without... he seems, <laughs> seems so rash. Well, he killed all the other people. Yeah, that that's could true. Have been, so I don't trust yeah, his don't... leadership ability. I don't either. I wonder if he's not going to make it. He oh. seems like the kind of person that could piss somebody off enough to get murdered. <laughs> I don't know who. I don't know who's going to do it. I think. Th- I think <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity for it. <laughs> Multiple people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe so. Band together. And to I have stop no it. idea what's going to happen with Apple Stand. I'm glad something's going to happen, but I, I it can't even guess what Ragnar it is. Ragnar is going to be back in England no, anytime it does soon. Not. I mean, he went all the way back to Kattegat, and now he's into the fight on his mm-hmm. hands. And so Appelstan's kind of on his own. Yeah. I mean, well, Horik would need him as a translator. So now what the heck is Horik going to do? Is he going to go off and make stupid choices? Is he going to, like, because he start a, a rescue mission for Appelstan just to see an likely. interpreter? It doesn't. Also, he seem... doesn't know... Apple stands even alive. Also, how many people have they already lost? Yeah. Do they even have enough people to fight? Never as many answers as there are questions. If I were Horik, I would pack up and go home. Yeah. But, yeah. Actually, if I were Horik, I wouldn't because I feel like Horik is not the smartest man. Yeah, Ragnar kind of left him in a bind. He really did. I think if Horik were smart, he would think to himself, you know what? I probably shouldn't have kicked your all Borg out of this agreement because it's really made a big mess. <laughs> yeah. Should have just yep. let him get in his boats and come over too. There's plenty of treasure to share. Now it's time for Cheek of the Week where we talk about something awesome that we want to share with each other and with you, dear listeners. Rosanna, what's your cheek? My cheek this week is a device that's very hard to explain. <laughs> it's called a Whiz Gear universal air vent magnetic car mount holder with fast swift snap technology for smartphones <laughs> that is a really long name <laughs> so basically what it is it's this little device that fits in the palm of your hand one side of it is a round plastic and rubbery but it's got a heavy duty magnet inside and then the other side is sort of a how do i explain what this is like a clip it's not a clip though it's It's more like it slides onto your vent. Oh, okay. And you can turn it one way or you can flip it and go the other way depending on how thick your vent is. And when you buy it, it comes with a rectangle magnet that you put in between your phone and its case. And so what's so great about it is it holds your phone in your car and you don't have to adjust anything. You just stick your phone to it. It's almost like it's sticky because it's it's a magnet. So there's no adjustment. You just stick it up there and it hooks to your vent. So it's right where you'd like sort of look down to. Mainly for me, what I use it for is when I'm following a map because I need it in my line of sight where I can just glance over and try to figure out where the heck I'm going, especially when I'm in Portland. <laughs> And $7 <laughs> on Amazon. Nice. That's my cheek. Nikki, what's yours? My cheek is a, kind of a blog. It's a Tumblr that is amazing. I'm not sure if I've ever told you about it before, Rosanna, but if I haven't. I know you're going to go there tonight right after this and like, binge read all of the <laughs> posts. It's called The Setup Wizard. The Setup Wizard.tumblr.com. It is <laughs> posts from someone who it's all I mean of course all fictional um but it's based on harry potter probably not surprised by hearing wizard but it is kind of following a man who does the it at hogwarts no such thing (laughs) (laughs) there hasn't been until him He's introduced to Wi-Fi. Uh, all the students have cell phones because, you know, they grew up out, outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A lot of them in the muggle world. And so he, you know, keeps the Wi-Fi going. He does all this technological stuff. And he's a muggle. He's completely new to the wizarding world but he's learning all this he's watching all this weird magic stuff happen around him and it's so funny because it's it's such a great parallel of him looking at magic and how crazy it is but the technology that he helps people with in hogwarts is like magic to them (laughs) if they didn't have magic 
They don't, like, the professors have no idea what's happening. People are coming to him because they're trying to cast spells on their iPads. <laughs> it is amazing. It's so funny. He'll um turn off Wi-Fi of people, like, misbehave. They have IT points you can earn instead of house points. Oh, my gosh. It is, God, it's so, so funny. And so it's not just the guy posting. Um, and I'm not sure if he, if he does all the posts himself or if there are multiple people that do it. There's the guy character, the main guy. And then he hires a woman who is a half-blood mm. to work with him. And then, you know, we meet some other people. We meet someone in the Ministry of Magic. There's a student that comes on every once in a while and posts. And he he's like the tech person. He's kind of a, a wizard hacker, I guess. <laughs> But it's just, it got it. It's hilarious. So just, I mean, just imagine Hogwarts if they had Wi-Fi and cell phones. I don't think I can imagine that. It is, God, it's so funny. It's so much fun to read. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. Um, there's a link right at the top where you can start from the beginning, which I definitely recommend doing it that way and just read all the way through to catch up. And they post several times a week. Uh, really? So, yeah. So you get, and wow. the, you know, they're just real short little, you know, a paragraph of text. But there are all these kind of subplots going on that you can keep up with that you get updates on every once in a while you know the woman is dating someone from the ministry of magic and there's one post where someone makes a port key out of a vhs of teenage mutant ninja turtles because because she doesn't think anyone will touch it and he's like of course i touched it and he ended up in the closet of this woman from the ministry of magic because that was her girlfriend and he wasn't supposed to get there and oh so it's gosh. just stuff like that, all these wacky things happening and, and misunderstandings and things. It's it's really, really fun to read. So that's the setup, Wizard. It's so much fun. If you like Harry Potter, you will love this. So listeners, you can visit our website to find all of our Cheeks of the Week, learn about our other podcasts, send us questions and feedback, and support the show through our Amazon affiliate link at somethingcheekypodcast.com slash Amazon. That's our episode. Please leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. It really helps us reach additional listeners. And follow us on Twitter at SomeCheek and Facebook.com slash SomeCheek. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,